Myopia, otherwise more commonly known as nearsightedness or shortsightedness, is something that most people are familiar with. In this video, I'll be introducing you to the world of myopia management and providing an overview, answering some frequently asked questions, including number one, what is myopia? Redefined, repositioned, and reframed. Number two, myopia, the global pandemic. Number three, I've always had myopia. What's the big deal and why does it matter now? So stay tuned. Hi, my name is Dr. Natalie Chai. This channel brings you the latest science-based education and treatments in dry eye disease, myopia management, and specialty contact lenses to help you understand why it should matter to you for optimal eye health, function, comfort, and even beauty. So either you are myopic or you know a family member or friend who is. So another leg of my special interest in optometry is myopia management. It is also called myopia control. However, the community is slowly transitioning away from that verbiage as it was providing a false sense of stopping progression completely, which is not true. So this topic is near and dear to my heart as I am quite myopic myself and is no stranger to the struggles of glasses, contacts, dry eyes, and also thinking about should I look into laser surgery? To add to the story, my nephew is also on the same path. So let's dive right into it and help you understand the gravity of the situation. Number one, what is myopia? Redefined, repositioned, and reframed. So we have always equated being myopic to being nearsighted. However, let me enlighten you, we're not really talking or describing the same thing. It is still very commonly put on the same level in literature and when you Google search. And I use it from time to time to help the parents of my patients understand it a little better. So let's first define the terms and we will then reposition them to how they relate to each other. So let's take a look at the definition of myopia. So myopia, a refractive error in which rays of light entering the eye parallel to the optic axis are brought to a focus in front of the retina when ocular accommodation is relaxed. This usually results from the eyeball being too long from front to back, but can be caused by an overly curved cornea and or a lens with increased optical power. It also is called nearsightedness. This was from the International Myopia Institute. So, as you can see, this definition describes and explains the physiological shape, length, and the changes of the actual eyeball and how it can affect light entering the eye. So let's, in contrast, take a look at the definition of what nearsightedness is. So, nearsightedness or myopia, as it is medically termed, is a vision condition in which people can see close objects clearly, but objects farther away appear blurred. People with myopia can have difficulty clearly seeing a movie or TV screen, a whiteboard in school, or while driving. And this definition is from the American Optometric Association. So as you can see, the definition describes the subjective or personal experience of vision for the person. So it's more of the symptom. Rather than saying that myopia equals nearsightedness, it is better to reposition them by saying that nearsightedness describes the symptoms of myopia. In other words, having myopia causes nearsightedness or Alternatively, having a longer eyeball or irregularly shaped cornea can cause someone to have blurry vision in the distance. So let me illustrate this further in the context of refractive surgery. So laser surgery will eliminate a person's nearsightedness. However, they are still myopic because the length of the person's eyeball is still the same. That hasn't changed. So there is nothing wrong with using the terms interchangeably, but this is just a way to get very specific. So since we're on the topic, let's also now define myopia management. Myopia management. The range of services an optometrist may provide in the treatment of myopia varies depending on the state scope of practice laws and regulations and the individual optometrist certification. The goals for management of the patient with myopia are clear, 
comfortable, efficient binocular vision, and good ocular health. And this was from the AOA, Care of the Patient with Myopia. Essentially, myopia management is for children up till the age of around early 20s, which is the age range of which research has shown stabilization of myopia going into adulthood. Although there has been many research and studies that have shown those still progressing even into their 30s. We'll go into those details in another one of my videos. Number two, the global pandemic, myopia, a childhood disease worth preventing. So there was a paper in 2015 that illustrated the potential impact of myopia. It was a joint report between the World Health Organization and the Brian Holden Vision Institute. It painted a picture that myopia is indeed an epidemic and down the road further, it is now a pandemic. So in 2010, it was estimated that uncorrected refractive error was the most common cause of distance vision impairment, affecting 108 million people and is the second most common cause of blindness globally. The prevalence of global myopia has surged 66% in the last three decades. And with projections from trends today, assuming similar trajectory, it is estimated that about 4.8 billion people worldwide will have myopia. Let's bring it a little bit more closer to home. So in the US alone, the prevalence of juvenile myopia increased from 25% in 1972 to 44% in 2004. In fact, every two out of five children in the US is already myopic. Whenever we're talking about a global pandemic, there's always an element of the economy. Just as health is super important and public health, so is the economy, as is the example with COVID. So the economic burden on uncorrected distance refractive error, largely caused by myopia, was estimated to be about $202 billion per year. This number was actually because of the unproductivity of what myopia can cause. So the prevalence of myopia, but also high myopia, is increasing at alarming rates. In addition, the onset of myopia that we're seeing in our children is starting at earlier and earlier years. This is super scary because the younger a child develops myopia, the more likely their vision will continue to deteriorate, making them more susceptible to potential blinding complications. Number three, what is the big deal and why does it matter now? Let me sum up by providing a couple key quotes that I feel really illustrates the issue. The first one is, physiological myopia does not exist. There is no safe level of myopia. Ian Flitcroft. The second quote goes, myopic kids get worse. Earl Smith. So these are the words from two of the leading experts in myopia management research. As you can see, these quotes I chose specifically because they go straight to the point. There is no sugar coating, it gets right to it. So their years of work, in addition to others, has been instrumental to the methods and our knowledge on the global impact myopia can potentially have on our children as they grow into adulthood. So you may still be wondering something like, well, I have myopia and I'm fine with my glasses, or, I know somebody who is nearsighted and they're fine, what's the big deal? Or I'll just go get laser surgery. You may also be wondering how come conventional glasses and contact lenses aren't enough? So the answer is you can think of these as prosthetics. So what is a prosthetic? So a prosthetic is an artificial body part. In essence, the glasses and contact lenses that you wear is basically an extension of your body part, which is your eye. In terms of myopia, it compensates for the overpowering of your eyeball. It is very well researched and documented that with increasing myopia, the risk of significant vision loss also increases. Examples of these ocular complications include earlier onset of cataracts, glaucoma, retinal detachment, and myopic maculopathy. So here is a chart. And looking at this chart, there are two key points I want to bring to your attention. 
The first is that the higher the myopia, the related risk jumps significantly with each level of myopia. The second is that even at a low level of myopia, one already has an increased risk of developing these complications, confirming there is no safe level of myopia. One of the most significant retinal pathology associated with increasing eye length is the progressive stretching of the retinal tissue. As it continues to stretch as the eye continues to grow, the tissue becomes more fragile as it thins out. It's almost like blowing a balloon. There is so much thickness that the balloon has that it will just keep stretching until it can and it pops. This predisposes the person to a condition called myopic maculopathy. Myopia affects every important structure related to eye function. It is associated with almost anything you can think about that could possibly go wrong in terms of eye disease outside from trauma. So let's take a look at an example. Let's take a look at my prescription. So in effect, my prescription in both eyes is around a minus 750 to a minus eight when we take into account my astigmatism. Well, as you can see from this chart, by being minus seven, I have to live knowing that my risk factor for myopic maculopathy is greater than you know 40% or 40 times in terms of my risk factor later on in life. So this is where, for me, it's pretty scary. There was nothing I could have done for myself or back in the day outside from wearing glasses and contact lenses. For me, all that I can do at the moment is just have routine, regular eye checkups for myself, have my eyes dilated each year just to make sure that my retinal tissues aren't stretching and not causing any higher risk factors for a retinal detachment. It is almost a running theme for me that why we should care ab about things now has more to do with having long-term vision. I talk about long-term vision in my dry eye video here. Check it out. And as I alluded to before, that it's not necessarily about us. So those of us who are in our 20s and above, this is more for the protection of our children or future children. It is a question of how prepared are we in preventing and picking up the loose ends of what has already happened and our personal resources to pay for the cost of trying to save your child's vision. So myopia has not been formally defined as a disease yet, although I don't think it is an overstatement. In fact, let's quickly take a look at what the definition of disease is. It is a disorder of structure or function in a human, animal, or plant, especially one that produces specific signs or symptoms or that affects a specific location and is not simply a direct result of physical injury. So I saw this in one of the webinars that I had watched over the pandemic and I thought it was actually very insightful. Myopia is a condition of a part, which is the eye, of a living animal, humans, which impairs normal functioning, which is vision, and is manifested by distinguishing signs, which includes increased axial length, decreased visual acuity and symptoms, which includes blurred vision at distance. Here are my final thoughts. It may be easy for some of you to understand the gravity of the situation, especially if you are myopic yourself and have experienced sometimes the inconvenience of what nearsightedness can do. And so you understand what your child might be going through and what may be in store for them. However, I'm reaching out more so to those who have always had relatively good vision or even a mild amount of myopia. Society has been using glasses as a means to correct nearsightedness since the 1600s in Italy. So I can understand why it can be difficult to wrap your head around how myopia is a big deal. There are doctors around the world who is trying to shift the paradigm of what we know about myopia and educate the public about this necessary change in mindset. Now here's the good news. It is a pandemic, but this pandemic is preventable. And through this series of myopia management, I will paint a picture of its possible impact in your child's world and also in yours. I hope you receive with an open mind because in some ways we'll have to unlearn and relearn what we think we know about being myopic and nearsighted. So that's it for me. Thank you for stopping by and showing interest in wondering what myopia management is all about. Please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell for my next weekly video, especially if you find value in my videos for you. 
Let me know what your experiences with myopia has been so far, and please leave a question down below. Until next time.